Hi there, Scratch lovers. I thought I'd take a moment just to show you some of the new features in Scratch 2.0, or at least the beta for Scratch 2.0. I was rather excited about this. I've been um, looking forward to the release of 2. Well, it's not a release. It's a release of the beta. I should correct myself there. Um, and it happened on my birthday, which is even better. Uh, so it was released January 28th, and uh, it is now live and open for anyone to try and play with. So if you've used Scratch in the past... Um, this is a little uh, introduction to what you can expect from Scratch 2. So uh, you can go and have a look for yourself just by going to this address here, just beta.scratch.mit.edu. So it's it's the old address for Scratch, just with beta dot in front of it there. And uh, the, the, the big obvious change is it runs now on the web. Yes, you no longer need to install the software on your computer. It runs directly in the browser, which is fantastic. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of benefits to that. Um, it does use Adobe Flash. I'll just click on the Create button here and take you in. And this is the Edit Mode. So this is where you create your Scratch projects. Now, like, like I said, it runs in uh, a Flash. So um, the whole program uh, has been completely rewritten in Flash uh, to run inside the browser. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, it's still, of course, completely free. Uh, Scratch never cost anything, and it still costs nothing, and the plan is to keep it that way. Um, it, if you've used Scratch before, there's not much of a learning curve to, uh, to get used to the new arrangement, even though it is quite different. Um, the, the most noticeable thing is things have been moved around. So this, uh, this section down here where it contains all the different commands, um, like that. Uh, this used to sit over on the far left-hand side of the, of the screen, and now it's, uh, it's where well, you can see it there, sort of more or less in the middle. The stage, where all the action happens, used to be over on the far right, now it's on the far left. So there is a bit of a rearrangement of stuff going on here, but the basics remain the same. So, you know, if I go in here to looks, and I pull out move 10 steps, and I go to control, and I say, um, you know, repeat that, and then put a weight block in there like that and when we run that you see the you know the cat still moves 10 steps at a time waits a second between moves so it works more or less the same as it's always worked and I don't think anyone who uh, is familiar with the old scratch would have too much of a, uh, a leap to get used to the new arrangement even though things are obviously in different positions some of the um the, the, the things that are new, uh, probably the biggest one is the thing called procedures. Um, so if I go down here to uh, more blocks, uh, well, actually, before I get to that, I'll just show you. So motion contains all the things you're used to seeing there. Uh, looks, again, is uh, pretty familiar. Um, sound, pen. Uh, there's a new one here called, it's, uh, called data now. It used to be called, uh, uh, gosh, what was it called before? Let me just take a look on the old one over here on the other screen. Uh, it used to be called variables, which um, you know a lot of people didn't know what that was, but it's, it, they called this data now. Um, what used to be listed in control has now been split into two categories called events and control. So they are slightly different. So all your broadcast messages and stuff are in here. Um, your uh, triggers, so you know when space key pressed, when green flag pressed, uh, when sprite click, that kind of thing, are now called events, which is a far more sensible name. And all the stuff that actually controls, so the if loops, the wait loops, that kind of thing, uh, now sit in the control section. Much more sensible. You'll see there's this extra feature here called cloning. I haven't really dug into this too much, but cloning allows a sprite to duplicate itself programmatically. Um, we've always been able to use the clone, or sorry, the, the stamp tool to duplicate an object. So like if I, if I right click on that, I can duplicate uh, a sprite. But this is different. This is programmatically building into the script the ability for a um, sprite to um, make a copy of itself as part of the script, which is, uh, I think, some interesting possibilities there. Um, sensing has the usual thing, with the exception of this one, which I think is interesting, video motion on this sprite. Um, and I had a bit of a play with this earlier. You can actually, if you turn that on, uh, which I won't do because it kind of... <laughs> I haven't figured out how to get rid of it yet, but if you turn this on, it actually replaces the stage with an image from your webcam and then uses the amount of motion uh, in this variable here called motion. So you could uh, you could actually have um, an image from the webcam controlling the sprite action based on how much motion is taking place in the video. That's kind of a cool idea. Uh, operators are sort of the same old, same old. There's probably not a lot of new stuff there. 
But this one here, more blocks, um, never existed in the old Scratch. Um, and what it does is it allows you to create subroutines or um, procedures. Uh, and and I mean, a simple example, if I say make a block here, and let's just call this block, um, I don't know, jump. Uh, and so we'll, we'll create a block here called jump, and we can define what jump does. So if I was to do something like, say, Oh, gosh, let's just change the Y value by, um, I don't know, uh, 60. So that would make the sprite move upwards by 60. And then we'll just grab a control here and we'll say wait. Uh, not one second, it's too long. Let's do, a, say, a 0 0.2, which is quite a short time. And then we'll stick another, um, stick another motion in there. We'll change the Y value again. This time we'll make it go down, so that would be minus, so be, let's say minus 60. So what we've done is we've created a, um, a block called jump, which in this case the sprite moves up, waits for a moment, then moves down again. So if I was to do that, you'd see that the sprite just jumps up and down like that. But now that I've defined that block, there I've got a block here called jump, I can do things like, well, let's... Um, that's, so, so it's events now, isn't it? Uh, if I say when space key pressed, jump. And what will happen is when I run this and it gets to this block called jump, it'll look over to here to see what jump is actually all about and then return back to the action. So when I press the space key, I can make the cat jump like that. Um, that's a real missing feature that Scratch never had before, this idea to call subroutines um, or procedures. And it now has it, so I think that's pretty exciting. Um, and opens up lots of possibilities for some interesting programming. Um, the uh, sound editor is another big change too. Uh, if I just click over here to sounds, you've always been able to put sounds in your sprites, um, but now you've got the ability, so, so I can go in here and I can, uh, I can import a sound. Um, I think, what is it? Yeah, okay. And there's a whole bunch of built-in sounds. So if I go to say, uh, I don't know, goose, and say okay. It brings it in and it shows me the sound in the editor here. And if I click this, I actually can see the waveform. Um, and I can edit the waveform too. So uh, let's just get a new one. Let's just hit the microphone button here. And I'll hit the record button and say, and then it wants permission to use my microphone. This is a recording of my voice. Okay, so, and what I've done here is I've, I've created a recording. This is a recording of my voice. And I can edit that. So I could take this piece here, for example, and I think, uh, how do I, can I get rid of that? Edit, um, delete. So I can delete that section. I can delete the little bit on the end. Edit, delete. I could uh, take the whole thing and you know make it louder, make it softer. Let's make it a little bit louder. Um, let's, uh, let's do something silly. Oops. I don't know what I did there. I clicked something by mistake. Um, I think I reversed it. This is a recording of my voice. No, I didn't. I made it fade in. Uh, I could do something like a reverse. And now I'm speaking backwards. So some really neat things. And the sound editor is new. And even just the ability for kids to come in here and, and mess about with sound, I think, is a really uh, great idea. Um, one of the other big changes is that the sprites are now vector graphics rather than um, uh, bitmap graphics. And the, the, if you remember back to the old uh, Scratch, if you had a sprite and you wanted to get bigger, I mean, you could always click on the little enlargement button here and you could click the sprite and it grows bigger. But what typically happened in the old one is that the, the cat would get more and more pixelated the bigger it got because it was made of pixels. Um, now this thing is actually a vector image, which means if I click on it, it keeps getting bigger and it doesn't get pixelated. It actually just redraws at a higher resolution, not a higher resolution, but a, a like a larger scale. And that, look, I mean, one of the things with, um, you know, with Scratch projects, often, you know, they just look pretty crappy sometimes because of the pixelation of the sprites. And that won't happen anymore because of this vectorization of the images. Um, to me, that's a really big deal. So I'm really quite pleased about that. So uh, look, there are a bunch of other things as well. I, I like the fact that um, you know this project, uh, which is really not much of a project, but there's this blue button up here that says "See Project Page," and if I click that, it sort of swings the page around, and this is the uh, the page as it would get published 
on the Scratch website. So you can come in here and, and, and introduce it and write a little bit about your project and some notes and credits and some project tags. You can do all that sort of stuff. Give it a name. Um, you know, my project. Oh, yeah, that was successful. Um, my project. Um, you can call it a draft so that it's not yet published. And... And, and when you click the share button, it shares it automatically over on the Scratch website. So I think it'll really um, encourage the sharing aspect of, uh, of Scratch as well. You can see down here the little logo here is copyleft. In other words, they're not protected by copyright. So when you do something on here, your work goes into the, uh, well, it's not the public domain, but it's into a shared pool where other people can then take your work and remix it. And consequently, you can also take other people's work and mix it as well. The see inside button, if I click that, that flips me back over to the other side and now I'm working on it. So it's a little bit like, it's quite kind of blog-like where you have a public-facing version that the public sees and when you swing it around, there's the behind-the-scenes action that the author sees. Except in this case, you know, because it's an open-source idea that anyone can go in and see the source code for any project. Um, that's kind of the main things I've noticed so far. I mean, there's a lot of little things, but they're the big things, the vector images, the uh, the procedural blocks, uh, the sound edit is fantastic, and just the fact that it runs inside a browser um, and I don't have to worry anymore about whether we've got, you know, the, the software is installed or whether it's the right version or whatever, whatever. Um, so long as we have a browser uh, and, well, obviously Flash has to be installed, um, then you can get to it. Um, just on that, because um, I know uh, you know people will say, but uh, I wanted to do this on an iPad, and iPads don't support Flash. Uh, there is apparently a bit of a project going on to try and build a HTML5 viewer, uh, and hopefully some of this stuff will be able to be viewed on tablet devices in the future. It's not not there yet, but uh, it's in the plans. Some of the other future uh, developments they're talking about are things like being able to receive information from other websites. So, for example, Twitter. Um, if you can imagine building a Scratch project that might be pulling data live from a Twitter stream, um, there's you know, some interesting possibilities there. Um, and they are talking about actually being able to have a downloadable view for offline use. Uh, the, the, the plus is that it's, it runs in the browser, it doesn't require any software, but the, uh, the downside right now is that um, it obviously you need to be online. Uh, so uh, they, they are talking about building a download downloadable version which will run offline so lots of exciting things there for the scratch community and this release of the beta for scratch 2.0 um, i don't know how long it will be in beta uh, i did read that they're trying to um, have a relatively short beta period so please go and have a play with it if you find any bugs uh, let them know um, and hopefully we can get this thing out of beta as soon as possible and into our classrooms. Um, and just quickly before i finish up uh, just over on this side here you notice there's this panel down the side Oh, actually, two, two, sorry, two little quick things before I go. Um, if you click on that uh, question mark there, it unfolds here, and here's the help menu all built in. So there's some how-to stuff here. If you want to, like, how do I make an animation? How do I, how do I make a game? How do I make something bounce? And you can click on these things, and it will actually take you to a set of instructions and give you examples and samples of how to build the code. That's great because kids can be working on a project and, and have the help right in front of them. Um, and I think we we'll really encourage them to use that. And the other, the other thing I forgot all about was this thing down the bottom here called Backpack. And you can see, um, if I just take, uh, say this snippet here, this when space press uh, jump, say that's something I use often. Um, and, and a classic example would be um, when uh, I do this all the time in my projects, I often build in little things like when C, C for clear, uh, and I go something like, uh, you know, clear the stage. The project which like uses the pen tool to draw all, all over the stage, you can have a little routine like that to clear it quickly. Well, if that's something you use all the time, you can take that and you can drag it down here into this area called the backpack. And the backpack is persistent across projects. So if I was to just go new and make a completely new project and it gets rid of the old one and opens up a brand new blank one, I go to the backpack and here are these little snippets of code that are persistent and they belong to me, they're mine, and I can reuse them. Uh, so if I grab that and drag it out, now I'm using that snippet of code in this new project without having to rewrite it. That's a real time saver. So um, 
there you go. So just a bit of a wrap up of some of the new features that I've noticed that I really like uh, in the new Scratch 2.0 beta.